Hey everyone, today we're talking Chia. Big thanks to Kepler Interactive for sending me a game review key. Most of you follow me for Ubisoft's Beyond Good and Evil franchise, and I feel pretty confident in saying that I think you're going to feel immensely satisfied by Awasep's Chia. Chia is one of those characters, much like Jade in Beyond Good and Evil, that is just gonna stay with you for a very long time. Chia is a fictional, soulful coming of age story with diverse characters, environments, and music inspired by New Caledonian culture. It's a tropical single player open world adventure that puts you in the role of Chia, a young girl determined to rescue her father from Meavora, the ruler of the archipelago. The narrative in this game is quite moving. Nature and diversity are front and center. The richness of New Caledonian culture is felt throughout. of those stories that you're not going to forget. You can feel the love and attention that was put into this game. Everything is thoughtfully crafted and there's so many things to do. It's pretty incredible that this team is so small. Hey everyone, we are Awaseb. While on her adventure, Chia discovers that she has a special gift that gives you, the player, the power to control over 30 animals and hundreds of objects. Sprint through the ocean as a fish, or on land as a dog or deer. At nighttime, see as clear as day as a cat, or roll down a cliff as a rock. Animals and abilities are noted in your journal as you find them. And yes, you can pet the animals. Very important, high top tier. To permanently increase your soul meter, complete shrine challenges. Shrine challenges always have the same goal, get to the soul fruit, but the challenges are always different. Sometimes you'll do a slingshot challenge, sometimes you'll do a race, it varies and it's always fun. Sculpting totems that match shrine doors will open them. You can replenish your soul meter by eating food at a campfire or a food stand. You can also use your slingshot to take down bananas and eat them to replenish your soul meter. Rock balancing challenges will unlock new soul melodies. Soul melodies let you invoke a different time of day, explosives, an infinite bubble that allows you to breathe underwater, and more. As fun as soul jumping is, physically jumping from tree to tree was my favorite thing to do. And it's so freaking cool. Keep an eye on your stamina as you move around because your stamina meter doubles as your health meter. If you use up all your stamina, you will pass out. To permanently increase your stamina, find and eat the stamina fruit that are scattered throughout the map. You can open the map on your full screen, open a minimized map, or just use your compass. Find point of view locations to unlock points of interest on your map. A while ago, I played a preview of Chia and I thought it was so beautiful the way she unlocked points of interest. The shout was so powerful and moving. I didn't know what I know now after playing the full game that there's a meaning behind that shout. It's just ugh, perfect. I enjoyed the combat, but when it comes to the game as a whole, it was my least favorite thing. Most of the combat in Chia revolves around mano camps and factories. To take down these fabric-like creatures and sentinels, you will first need to burn nearby fabric piles. You can burn them down by soul jumping to oil lamps, flammable canisters, or even by throwing explosives. FYI, cows and chickens can provide really good explosives. If the creatures catch you, you can try to break away. If that fails, you'll end up in a little cell, which you can easily get out of by soul jumping. As you move through the story, these areas can become more challenging with additional quests to break up the monotony. If you want to skip gameplay areas like this, you can. You'll just receive a warning before proceeding. There are also options within settings to tone down violence and difficulty. I was pretty predictable when it comes to combat, so I'm really interested in seeing how other players tackle these areas. For example, I know that there's a bird in the game that barks. <laughs> It scares away enemies when it barks, so I never really took advantage of that. I really did like the boss battle at the end. It was very unique and visually interesting, a little bit frustrating at times. It just stands out from the rest of the game.
Customization items for your boat can be used at the docks. Some docks will have items you can purchase. Sometimes you'll find free items as well. You can spawn your boat and fast travel to other docks that you've discovered. Customization options in Chia are endless. There's so much to discover, unlock, and choose from. You can find items in chests, treasure hunts, claw machines, or purchase cosmetics with the pearls and braided trinkets you collect in your travels. The claw machine is my favorite way of getting customization items. Dump a trophy into the machine to get three tries. If you end up picking up a yellow ball, you'll get another trophy. So use your attempts wisely or save before you play. Trophies can be won by participating in land and sea races, shooting ranks, Range and diving board challenges. Customization items for Chia can be used at various campfires throughout the map. This includes clothing, accessories, face paint, hair, backpack, glider, and ukulele variations. There's a ton of variety so well designed and so super cute. You can sleep and eat to regenerate your stamina and soul meter. If you need a musical break, free play your ukulele. You can also free play outside of the campfire or use it to invoke soul melodies. It's a very intricate system that I think will be appreciated by musicians and non-musicians alike. There are interactive musical segments throughout the game. You can participate or you can turn them off and view the cinematic instead. And of course, the music throughout the game was absolutely stunning with the choir being my favorite element. Once you're finished with the main campaign, you can always continue playing and find everything on the map. There are new enemies that appear. You can also keep on taking old school photos with or with Without filters and develop them at the photo kit. And I gotta say, I don't think a game has ever made me cry. I think Journey came pretty close, but this one just nailed it. There's an ending after the credits that is spectacular. It's one of the best endings I've ever seen in gaming. I don't want to spoil it for you, so I'm not going to show anything. I want you to experience it. Obviously, I'm gonna recommend this game. It's an absolutely beautiful experience. If you're homophobic, you're not going to like it. Thanks again to Kepler and Active for sending me a game review key, and thank you all for watching. See you next time.